After defeating Liu Yao, Sun Tzu continued his advance. Having quickly subdued the lands of Jiangdong, the people elected to give him a new name. The Little Conqueror. They compared him to the legendary conqueror Xiang Yu, who had overthrown the Qin Dynasty. Meanwhile, in the Central Plains, the hero of chaos, Cao Cao, was steadily increasing his strength. After the emperor fled Chang'an, Cao Cao took him under his protection and moved the capital to Shu Chang. In possession of the imperial seal, Yuan Shu used it to declare himself emperor in order to block Cao Cao's grab for power. However, Yuan Shu's claim was ignored and an imperial edict was made to slay him for his treachery. For the authority of the emperor lies not in a mere object, but rather in he who wields the most power. These wise words of Zhou Yu would soon be proven true. Sun Tzu moved to obey the edict, and together with his family, attacked Yuan Shu at his base of Shou Chuan. Also present was Cao Cao, as well as Liu Bei, whom Cao Cao had taken into his protection. Sun Tzu's heart burned with a fiery passion as he came face to face with these two great heroes of the age. Yuan Shu's army was decimated by the efforts of Sun Tzu, Sun Shangxiang, and the others. However, the little conqueror's eyes were already focused on the next threat to his plans. His name was Cao Cao, the hero of chaos. He was a man who would sacrifice anything to realize his ambitions. Be it his friends, his people, or even the emperor himself. As they fought side by side, Sun Tzu saw and understood the dark nature of Cao Cao's heart. Following the defeat of Yuan Shu, Liu Bei rebelled against Cao Cao. Possessing superior military might, Cao Cao quickly scattered Liu Bei's forces and moved his troops to the north. His destination was the fields of Guandu, where he would challenge Yuan Shao for supremacy over the land. Thus, he showed a slight gap in his defenses. This was all Sun Tzu and Zhou Yu needed. They quickly advanced their men to Xuzhang to strike at Cao Cao. The fires within Sun Tzu's heart burned brightly as the successor of his father's legacy. But like all flames, his were eventually extinguished. Despite his burden of sadness and the weight of an entire kingdom on his shoulders, Sun Quan succeeded his fallen brother as ruler. By his side stood none other than Sun Tzu's old friend, the incomparable strategist Zhou Yu. On behalf of his new lord, Zhou Yu gathered the troops and hurriedly withdrew to Jiangdong. The soldiers of Wu were in a state of shock at having lost their ruler. Zhou Yu knew that it was not the right time to face Cao Cao. And so he professed that the best plan of action would be to lure Cao Cao to them by attacking Jing province. Within Jing were Sun Jian's old nemeses, Huang Zhu and Liu Biao. Further, it lay in the center of the country. Its lands were fertile and its population was plentiful. Convinced, Sun Quan followed Zhou Yu's advice and advanced his troops to Xia Ko. Following the deaths of his beloved father and brother, the mantle of leadership had been suddenly thrust upon him. In fact, the severity of his circumstances often caused Sun Quan to question whether this was actually happening at all.
like my brother. Zhou Yu must command our army. My lord's Zhou Yu, Tai Shu Tzu, my lady. My lord, who do you think it is that they're fighting for? I, uh... And please, don't you say it's for Lord Sun Tzu either. It's you. Each and every one of them would gladly give their lives for you. They're giving everything they have. You're right. I have been selfish. Lian Shu, I ask that you stay by my side. If I ever lose my way again, I'll need you with me. It would be my pleasure. Go on. Go and talk to everybody. They've all been worried about you, you know. I too am sad about Sir, but lamenting his death won't bring him back. That's why I'm going to do my best to help you. I appreciate your kindness. How about a new weapon, my lord? He has anything you could ever wish to fight with, and then some. Everyone's been really down since Xu Chong. This is our chance to get everyone on their feet again. My father served under Huang Zhu until he was killed by a man named Gan Ning. He is sure to participate in this battle, and when I find him, he will pay for what he did. Ling Tong. Lord Ling Tong acts aloof, but his loyalty to Wu is the match of anyone. I saw the man who killed Lord Ling Tong's father. I'd like to avenge him, but you know. Look at her. Oh, I could watch her all day. She and I used to be close, but I let her go. For the greater good, you know. Uh, my lord, you didn't hear that, did you? Master, no, I believe I should be calling you lord from now on. Huang Gai. We shall give our lives in your name, my lord. Now, let us go and avenge your father's death. You are the third leader we've had in such a short time. Please, stay alive, my lord. Forgive him, my lord. He is young and insensitive. We still have many promising officers. The courageous Taisha Tzu. The brilliant Zhou Yu. It was Cheng Pu who told Lord Sun Jian that the seal was real, yes? I feel that changed everything. We'll keep our lord safe. Yes, sir. Alone, you are nothing. Together, we can overcome any obstacle. I owe my life to Lord Sun Tzu. However, before I could repay that debt, he was taken from this earth. That is why I shall serve you in his stead. I figure that is the best way I can honor my debts. Our Lady is so strong. Even in the hardest of times, she is looking to move forward. Huang Zhu is a weakling, but he can be cunning too. I'm worried he may have something up his sleeve. It must have come as a great shock to Lord Taishu Tzu to lose our Lord. If we can claim victory today, the tides of this war will change. I know it.
You look relieved. It is almost like you're a different person. Everybody, begin the march. We shall slay Huang Zhu and avenge our Lord's death. Come, men. I will claim the head of my father's killer, Huang Zhu. In your service, my lord. Together, we will make your brother's dream a reality.
Huh. Enemy commander in the front line. There I guess you will do for an opponent. Oh man. This ought to be good. I'm ready for a fight. For my lord, I will give my all. Fight on! We must not fall short. Lord Gunnick, the commander orders you to retreat at once. What? I was just getting fired up. This an order is not. This officer bows before the might of the Soon family. An enemy unit has been sighted heading for the southeastern ships. We must intend to attack on the enemy It would be nice to get them out of the way before we set sail. Heroic! I guess I need to pick up the pace. Don't worry! We'll get through this if we all work together! Take it easy. There's no need to argue. How about you both take me on at once? Officer bows before the might of the Soon family. I believe your wits are a match for mine. We believe in you. Each and every one of us are happy to be watched over by you. I must defeat you. My duty demands it. Now come and face me! I must retreat! This is not the end! Vengeance is mine! Father, brother, I will run no longer. 
For the people of Wu, I will forge a new future. The victory at Xia Ko was a momentous occasion for Wu. They gained the brave warrior Gan Ning, as well as many bright young officers and battle-hardened veterans. All of them were bound together by the strength of purpose displayed by Sun Quan. Now that he had awakened as a capable leader, many talented officers came to join his cause. Sun Quan listened carefully to their opinions and strengthened his power base south of the Changjiang. Having defeated Yuan Shao, it was then that Cao Cao made his move to the south. After engulfing all of Jing within his mighty grasp, he set sights on Sun Quan. Fight or surrender? The moment of decision had finally come. My lord, we cannot bow before a scoundrel like Cao Cao. But we cannot hope to match the might of his army. We must surrender. Cao Cao's demand for our surrender. Liu Bei's request for an alliance. What would my father have done? Or my brother? Surrender. Alliance. Both options are... reasonable, I think. But... I have faith in Wu. Faith in you all! Therefore, I must think of our future. Fine! We will join forces with Liu Bei and defeat Cao Cao! From now on, any who suggest surrender will share in this desk's fate! He had chosen the path of resistance. To anyone else, it surely seemed like an incredibly rash decision. Cao Cao! From now on, any who suggests surrender will share in this desk's fate. He had chosen the path of resistance. To anyone else, it surely seemed like an incredibly rash decision. Cao Cao! From now on, any who suggests surrender will share in this desk's fate. He had chosen the path of resistance. To anyone else, Liu Bei's strategist, Zhuge Liang, worked together with Zhou Yu. And the two of them came up with a brilliant plan to be executed at the Battle of Cherbi. The location of this battle will prove fortuitous to our forces. It suits our superior naval skills perfectly. In addition, Cao Cao's large navy will not be able to freely navigate the narrow riverbanks. We can use that to our advantage by setting their ships on fire. Doing so will easily eliminate the numerical disadvantage we face. However, the winds this time of year blow from the north. Even if we light the fires, they will simply spread back upon us. The winds from the southeast will blow. You can count on it. Very well. Although I am not entirely sure about this, without the fire attack, we stand no chance of victory. <laughs> <laughs> 